Janet Rangi, welcome. I hope you had a good Monday today, wherever you are. Thank you so much for following and thank you so much for subscribing. And thank you for always following the past videos and leaving reviews, okay, and leaving reviews. Welcome. Today I'm going to talk about your next career in nursing. And the reason I say this is because I have so many of you who are changing careers. So this is not just for the nurses. For In any case, nurses know the trend. They know how to get into these nursing careers. But some of you I'm getting from business, you call me, you say, Janet, I want nursing. Basically, almost everyone, especially all most of us females, okay? Uh, whether you're doing history, English, linguistics, agriculture, accounting, business management, name it. All these careers, I've met all of you. I've spoken to thousands of you, okay? And most of you tend to lean towards nursing. So I thought, let me just do this video to help some of our new followers to understand some of the benefits. I know this is not the best time for me to do a video so that most people will be watching but when you wake up or you come from work, please feel free to watch this video and share. Share with your friends who've always wanted to know more about nursing. So I'm going to run through nursing programs. And thank you so much for spreading the word. I've been a big advocate of changing to nursing because of a good career, good jobs, and also a green card. For many, many years, I've been a big, big advocate of this. And also, I've been a very big advocate of bringing information about accelerated nursing. I'm very impressed that right now in our communities, that is common knowledge, okay? It was not common knowledge five years ago, unless for the nurses. But now everyone's still in the sunshine continent and those coming here, they call me with the word accelerated, very informed. And I'm very proud of everyone for sharing this information because information is power. So to begin with, I'm going to start with the lowest level as I go towards the highest level. And I love you so much for coming, okay? I love your comments. Thank you so much. Share, share, okay? I see all of you, okay? All right. So starting from the lowest level, okay, most people when they come to the United States, they like healthcare because of stability. That is just what it is, okay? Yeah. Um, so I'm going to pause the comments a little bit and then I'll focus, okay? I'll focus on the comments much later, okay? All right, so let, let's let's move on. Most people, when they come to the United States, they love stability. And when I mean stability, I mean money. Stability, I mean a job. So they end up with a certified nurse assistant. These are very short courses you can do online. They are called CNA. Or you can do within the hospital. Or you can do on-job training and do nursing certification. Usually, there are state exams. Every state is different. But the, one, the name you want to write down is CNA. If you're here in America, you probably know it already. If you are not in America, please pen and paper and you come to see Janet Rangi, CNA. If you know this information, do not take it for granted. And I'm going to start CNA all the way. Okay, so keep tuned so you can hear all the good stories who will earn the most money in nursing. Okay, this will be your nursing career, whether you're in mathematics, whether you're in the field of agriculture. This video is for everyone. So CNA is a good course, very short, but it gives you that stability to start life in America. It gives you exposure to the nursing experience in the United States. You get to know patients. You know how they talk. You know how hospitals operate. You know how to work with the nurses. You know how to work with the doctors. You know how to work with kitchen, housing, I mean, and other departments in the hospital. Okay, it's just that exposure. It doesn't have to be the hospitals. Most CNAs work in the hospital. They work in the uh, nursing homes and they work with long-term care facilities, okay? Or they can work even in group homes in some places. So generally that is where, uh, and share with us how much CNAs earn. I haven't been checking after the pandemic, maybe salaries went up and I don't wanna be wrong, okay? But generally those are good, job that's good jobs that give you stability. So the main two goals is stability, good money. And the third reason why people do uh, CNA apart from settling in the United States is to propel you into nursing. It's a good preparation, okay? You get your feet wet, you get your hands wet, and you get to meet registered nurses. You realize, wow, they're earning good money, and then you feel motivated to one day go to school, okay? So that is CNA. Start with that when you come to America on a green card or other working visas or you have the ability, CNA is always a good start. That is what people do when they first come in the United States. Moving on, moving on, which is the next level? The next level we call LVN, okay? Licensed Practical Nurse or Licensed Vocational Nurse. 
LVN or LPN. Okay, now this is a licensed nurse. Very practical, as the word says, it's a vocational course. Usually it's very short, probably two years at most, in a community college. Okay, community college will give you this kind of nursing. It's very good. Okay, it doesn't focus on research, leadership, and critical thinking. Okay, LVNs mostly work under the RNs, registered nurses. Okay, they are mostly the ones going to do the practical work together with the registered nurses. Some of their roles intertwine between LPN and RN. Okay, and what are these? some of these roles that intertwine? Blood sugars, measuring urine, making sure the color is nice, looking at the, the, the products of patients, making sure the smell, the color, you document, okay, if the patients have diarrhea, vomiting, okay, feeding, making sure they give a, uh, what we call tablets, oral, oral medications, okay, some states allow them to hang a, a IV antibiotics, starting IV lines, some states allow them to give blood. So it just depends with the hospital policy, okay? But generally now they are doing nursing, but more practical. There are some things they will have to get a registered nurse license or they will get um, a help from the registered nurse. And I see your comments. I'll just focus on the video because people really want to know the content of this message. So that is vocational nursing. It pays very well. I think most of them by now, they are paying at least minimum $25 an hour. Jobs are plenty. From the time I came to this country, they always said, we are getting rid of LVN. Everyone needs to be a registered nurse. Everyone needs to have a degree. No, they've never gotten rid of these people. They need them. Okay. Most questions I get about LVN, can it be done online? Most nursing courses, you can do some theory online, but you need practice, practical, practical experience. You need to go at the bedside and learn the skills. So that is what we call a licensed vocational nurse. Write down this. If you're listening to me, a licensed vocational nurse cannot qualify for a green card. Okay, they can qualify for a green card through other means. Okay, through family, through employment, through other avenues, but not as a fact of uh, having a licensed practical nurse. And you will hear why. Because they go to school for two years. So keep that in mind. I hear people saying, I just ran for LVN for two years and then I get a green card. Not through that process. There are other green cards you can get, but LVN will not give you a green card. Very, very important point. But you have nothing to lose because you know what? From LVN to RN is just a transition of one year, one and a half years. So you have nothing to lose. Feel free to start with this course. If it's cheaper, it's faster, it's available, starting is better than not starting. You understand? Even LVN will propel you to RN. Okay, so that is LVN. If you have any questions, please share with us in the comments. I love you so much for coming. Now let's move on to the, move on to the next level. The next level we call registered nursing, registered nurses. Okay, most of you, you know, RN, RN. Okay, these ones go to uh, community colleges or universities. The license is called registered nurse, but the training can be three years of registered nurses nursing, associate degree in a community college, or it can be a four-year degree in a university, okay? Three years or four years, it doesn't matter. All of them end up doing the same exam called the NCLEX, okay? NCLEX is a nursing exam, licensing exam done by most, not all of them, it's mandatory. For you to work in the United States of America as a registered nurse, you have to do that exam called NCLEX. This is the exam even foreign nurses do. And I will touch a little bit in the end about foreign nurses, so stick around, okay? But generally speaking, a registered nurse is trained for three years or four years, three years of associate's degree in a community college or four years of university education, bachelor's degree in nursing. They are all registered nurses. Hospitals are looking for a registered nurse, okay? They can earn even the same salary. Now, some big hospitals that need to have good names and recognition, they prefer a bachelor's degree. But for the most part, employers are looking for the RN license. So it just depends. Okay, salaries might not even differ. So it just depends with what the hospital is looking for. Okay, you are more likely to work in a nice hospital, big hospital, recognized hospital, if you have a bachelor's degree in nursing. But registered nurses, mostly you'll find them in nursing homes. You'll find them in a, you know, uh, long-term facilities. 
And also in some hospitals, as I said, most hospitals actually use registered nurses. Let's just be honest, community uh, hospitals everywhere in the United States, okay? These ones can qualify for EB3 employment-based green card. This is how international nurses come. They come because of three years of nursing or four years of nursing. That is why people call me and say, Janet, I went to a community college. Can I qualify? I went to MTC. Can I qualify? The question is, did you cover three years of nursing? Did you cover four years of nursing? And it cannot be specialization. This one, I'm hitting main points because I know your question has been doing this for a long time. Okay, the most common uh, question I get is, can I qualify? You cannot be just a psychiatric nurse. Okay, I am a midwife. I am this. No, it has to be general nursing, covering the whole spectrum of human humanity, from pediatrics children, okay, to teenagehood, to adulthood, to geriatrics, old people. And you have to cover all subjects, community nursing, medical surgical, child, uh, child, uh, child bearing. Okay, and the maternity, surgery, all those. So it has to be general nursing, three years, four years of nursing. Okay, not a specialization. So those people that go to specialization, they will not even put you through CGFNS. And again, I'll cover a little bit towards the end for international nurses. But this video is mainly for people who are coming to watch me because they are coming from home with different kinds of degrees. Okay, now let me stop here and kind of explain a little bit. Some of you, you watch me. As I said, you have agriculture, you have a first degree in anything. And you want to utilize nursing. And you have heard Janet saying accelerated nursing. So how do you do this? So if you've never watched my videos, yes, it's possible. It is very possible to do accelerated nursing. So what do you do if you want to do accelerated nursing? Because you will also become a registered nurse through accelerated nursing programs. I want you to take your degree in history, in linguistic, in languages, in wherever you have, approach a school that gives accelerated nursing, send them your degree, say, hey, guys, I want to do accelerated nursing. Can you tell me the next steps? Do not uh, prepare for accelerated nursing blindly. Approach two or three potential schools that will give you accelerated nursing. Share with them the transcript. Guess what the department will do? They will say, you know what? We see you have this. We see you have this from your business. We see you have this from your degree in management and uh, procurement and all those courses you do. We'll take English. We'll take mathematics. We'll take statistics. But you need to do this sociology here. You need to do psychology. We need you to do biology one and two. We need you to do chemistry one and two. So they will guide you. Now, when they guide you, they will tell you, okay, feel free. You can do that with us in this university, or you can find your own community college somewhere and complete these prerequisites or pre or requirements for nursing. Okay, now that is when you hear accelerated nursing is only 12 months, it's 16 months, it's 18 months, true. But don't think that you'll just join for one year and then you get voila, a bachelor's degree in nursing. No, you have to do preparation. This preparation will depend on you, your money, your speed, and your commitment. I have seen someone crash these things in eight months. That was record-breaking. Most people will take maybe one year of to complete these prerequisites for accelerated nursing. Okay, Most people will go to a community college to save on cost. Okay, They are going to go to a community college to save on cost where they will do that anatomy one, and two, chemistry one and two, microbiology, chemistry, physics, whatever they ask you to do. And yes, don't say, I didn't go to school for the sciences. They will teach you, my friends. Do not be, I am a teacher in mathematics. I am a teacher in Swahili. They will teach you. Okay, you just have to commit and they will take you to start. So now you have approached a university. They have given you the courses they will take. They will reduce some and keep some and give you credit to what you have performed before. Mostly grades above C. Preferably grades above B, they will take. Anything below, some universities will not take anything below a B. Some universities will not take anything below a C. But they will definitely tell you what you need to do so you don't repeat things over and over again. Now, after you finish the prerequisites in a community college or a university, then you come back. You say, guys, I am ready for admission. Then they will put you in the next admission group. Okay? Now they'll tell you, yes. We told you to go do this and this. 
you brought these requirements back, will combine with your current degree because they know you are ready for rigorous, okay, uh, academics. Then they will admit you in the accelerated nursing program. Some programs tell, uh, take 12 months, some take 16 months, and some take 18 months. Then voila, you will graduate with a bachelor's degree in nursing. That is what we call accelerated nursing because it's 12 months, 14 months, 16 months. Every program is different. Usually it's very intense. You cannot work while going to school. Okay. You can if you want, but most programs is not recommended. So you want to prepare the finances. Good news. If you have a green card, again, you will find student loans. If you do not have a green card, Janet has spoken about Empower. Empower is more likely to support a nurse because they know after graduation, you will get a job and work and pay back the money, okay? So that is accelerated nursing. I hope I've covered everything in that program before I continue to the next level of nursing. So that group is called registered nurse. Whether you did accelerated nursing, 16 months, or you did bachelor's degree in nursing, the traditional one, or you did associate's degree in nursing, you are all going to sit for NCLEX and get licensed uh, uh, with registered nurse license. The most common uh, question I get from you in this section, Janet, so now you said I have a degree in uh, commerce. So would you recommend me to do community college associate's degree? Or Janet, would you recommend me to go and do, of course, not a traditional, uh, accelerated? To me, they, it counts almost the same time. So I think you need to look at the cost, number one. Because look, if you take prerequisites for more than one year or one and a half years, right? Then accelerated nursing is another one and a half years. That is three years, which is equivalent to an associate's degree. The only difference is, this is a reason for you to consider the cost. Accelerated nursing tends to be more costly. It's more expensive. Community college will be slow, but three years of comfort, taking your time into nursing. However, in the end, these three years will give you a associate's degree in nursing, and this accelerated will give you a bachelor's degree in nursing. That is the difference. So it comes down to cost. Secondly, do you want an associate's degree or you want a bachelor's degree? But even if you get an associate's degree, then you'll have to add one year online to get BSN. I hope that covers. So when I'm covering this, I'm answering so many questions that I've gotten over the years. It just comes in my head because I know your questions. I'm answering to your needs. So now we've finished registered nurse. Okay. Now let's move to the next level. Because this one, again, I get many, especially people who are international, they want to come and do a master's degree in nursing. So if you're here, whether you are registered nurse, okay, you must have a bachelor's degree whether through accelerated program or through the traditional program, traditional track of four years, masters, you must, you must, you must have a bachelor's degree in nursing, okay, before you do masters in the United States. Now, do not confuse two kinds of masters. Listen to me, people who are international. Janet, can I become a nurse practitioner? I am coming from, from, from this country and I want to come for master's in nursing. I already have a degree in nursing. No, you cannot. Unless you come, pass the NCLEX, become a registered nurse, that is the only way you'll combine your degree together with your nursing license, American nursing license, to do a master's in called nurse practitioner. Are we clear? Because nurse practitioner is practical. You have to see patients. You have to prescribe medicines, x-rays, labs, okay? It's the practice of medicine, simply put. That is how they trained me in UCLA. If someone asks you who is a nurse practitioner, it's the practice of medicine, okay? So you cannot say, I'll come from home and then I'll ap apply to become a nurse practitioner. You cannot. Unless you bring your, li uh, your license, nursing license from home, Come here, do your NCLEX or do your NCLEX wherever you are. Get a registered nurse license in the United States and bring your bachelor's degree. Then you can qualify plus experience. Okay, then you can do a nurse practitioner. Now, that is not to say there are not any other uh, um, 
master's programs. First of all, nurse practitioner, let's just break it down. We have family nurse practitioner. We have psychiatric nurse practitioners. We have a clinical nurse specialist. And we have geriatric nurse practitioners. And we have midwives. And the biggest of all, which most of you are taking, especially the men, the men, when they come, they work in the emergency room and then they go for something called nurse anesthetist. Let's be honest. Nurse anesthetist, unlike doctors, if not better than doctors. You understand? I hope you learned something. So most of the male nurses who come in my consultations and maybe they wanted to do medicine or something like that, this is usually an opportunity for them to practice medicine as nurse anesthetist. It's the truth. Okay? So I've covered this is the clinical part. But let's say you're international. You want, you are already a nurse, but you, you don't have a nursing license in America, but you want to come on a nursing master's degree. There's, you can come on what we call um, nursing informatics. You don't need a license. Nursing administration, you don't need a license. MBA, you don't need a license. Nursing research, you don't need a license. Nursing education, you do not need a, 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 a license. Okay. Nurse practitioners have a lot of experience as registered nurses. Then they go to school for another two years. Sometimes they have to do internship or postgraduate another three years, which will be a total of uh, three years. For you to become a nurse practitioner, more than likely you've gone to school seven or eight years, okay, in total. But that's, that's beyond this video. I don't want to keep you here for so long. So we finished master's in nursing, all fields, whether you, are, you have a license or you don't have a license. Okay, the biggest of all in nursing now is the nursing PhD. You can do PhD or you can do what we call DNP. There's a difference. So if you want DNP, it will only be three years. You are specializing on the clinical aspect. This is a nurse practitioner who wants a doctorate, but clinical track. But the one that does PhD has a master's in nursing, but wants to focus on teaching and research and administration. I don't have to talk about PhD in nursing. At this point now, most of you, you know what to do, okay? So generally speaking, that is how people become nurses in the United States, okay? Now let me cover briefly about international nurses and then I will summarize. And thank you so much for coming. I love your comments so much, but I had to focus because this one I have to keep in mind all the, all the points that people are looking for. I've done videos, old ones. I know I need to do fresh ones. How people come to America, Okay, international nurses. If you're an international nurse, as I said, it has to be three years or four years of general nursing. If you have that, the important thing is to have a license from your own country. Basically, end of story, period. If your country has not given you a license, America is not going to give you a license. So that is some people go to the universities back home and they want to skip internship because they want to rush to America. No. You need to be patient. You need to finish, okay, your nursing degree and then do internship. For those who do associate's degrees, most of the time they do not need what? Uh, internship. But you have to do that internship if that's the one who will give you a license. If you try to come to America without a license, you will start all over again. That license is so important because they do not allow nurses to be licensed here if they are not license in the home country and the first process you will have to do is to evaluate your documents evaluate your education tell america who you are through a process we call cgfns that is an organization that reviews nursing education foreign nursing education in the united states once you send all your documents which cannot come directly to you uh, from you they come from the institution they are directed where to philadelphia in an organization called cgfns there are two ways you can do it yourself or you can use an agent. So when you see agents coming to pick you up, understanding this process is very important. Then you can understand where they are, what they are telling you. So the first thing is to collect your documents, including your nursing education, your nursing experience, your nursing license, and take it to CGFNS. What is the role of CGFNS? Is to evaluate your nursing education, give it grades. Okay? And in the end, give you something we call a visa screen. A visa screen means they've looked at your education. They have evaluated your education. You probably have done English IELTS or you have done TOEFL, okay? And some other requirements, fingerprints, wherever they ask you, you have to get something we call visa screen. The goal of CGFNS is to evaluate your education, your nursing experience, and give you something called a visa screen. 
Once you get a visa screen, now you're ready to choose any state in the United States that you want to practice. That is what the agent is doing for you or you're doing yourself. I have seen people who did themselves and then they came here for maybe a master's in education. I have seen them and then they came and passed the NCLEX while here because they did the CGFNS process themselves. You understand? But if you are using an agent, this is the process they are doing. Okay. Once you get a visa screen, you say, you know what? Now I want to practice in one of the states. Choose any state. Is it Nevada? Is it New Mexico? Is it Texas? Is it Minnesota? Is it New York? Once you choose that, then you go to the board of nursing, foreign nurses. That is what the, the agent is doing. What are the requirements for foreign trained nurses? Number one on the list will be the visa screen. Without the visa screen, no state is looking at you. Okay, once you produce the visa screen, they will also maybe ask you documents directly from your school. They'll ask you for background check. They might ask you for ethic exam or something, a small exam to understand the ethics of nursing, whatever it is. Every state is different. Once they are happy, you have a visa screen. They have looked at your education. They have looked at your education uh, experience. They have looked at everything. They will issue something we call ATT, permission to test. That permission to test, mostly you have six months unless things have changed. To prepare for the NCLEX. NCLEX is the nursing exam done by all international nurses or nurses trained in the United States to practice nursing in the United States. Okay? Now, once you have the ATT, you're preparing, preparing for one exam. Again, you choose one state of your choosing. That will become what we call license by examination. That will become your home state. If you choose Kansas to do the nursing board in Kansas, that becomes your uh, home state because you pass the nursing exam through Kansas, through Arkansas. That is what we call home, licensed by examination. Then what do you do if you want to practice in Texas and you did license by examination in Arkansas? Okay, you will do a process called endorsement. Okay, from now on, one state, and then you can endorse in 50 others. It doesn't mean you have to keep doing exams, exams, exams in every state you go. So every state will say, okay, are you uh, applying for license by examination or are you uh, asking licensing by endorsement? If it's endorsement, they will tell you what they need from you. Again, maybe education, your license from Arkansas, okay, and all that, and then they will just give you endorsement. Now, you can't be endorsing, 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 endorsing. Most of you will become traveling nurses. Does it mean every time you're endorsing, you're endorsing, you're endorsing, you're endorsing? It's tired. They have something called compact states, meaning these compact states have come together and said, us, 25 of us, or us, or uh, 30 of us, we have an agreement that if we have a nurse from Arkansas, if we have a nurse from Texas, they can practice any of these 30 states. So then you register for that compact state. That is how nurses travel from one state and another without endorsement. They just use one home license to work in all these states. So that is how it will work for you as an international nurse. Key point, CGFNS, key point, NCLEX. Once you pass the NCLEX, now the hospital is ready for you. You understand? The, license, the hospital will be like, hey, Mr. Lawyer, okay, JD, go to immigration. We have a qualified nurse here. Okay, then they will file for you the I-140. Petition green card for a foreign worker. Okay, then you will go through the labor certification. After the labor certification, they go, then I-140 is approved. If you are outside America, they will send you a green card to something called the National Visa Center. The case will be closed with USCIS, the immigration, and it will be sent now to the uh, State Department. That one deals with embassies around the world. When your papers are ready, they will email you. And they will email the embassy at home to coordinate with you an interview. Now you will join the people who won the green card lottery. You will go for medicals. You go for everything. You show up at the embassy. They give you an immigrant visa. When you reach here in two, three weeks, you have pew, green card comes to your mailbox plus social security number. If you're in America as a visitor, if you're in America as a student and you pass that nursing exam and then they file for you, the hospital sponsors you. Immigration gives you approved I-140. It will not be sent to the State Department. That is for international people, embassies. U.S. will be right here. You'll go through a process called uh, adjustment of status. 
you are adjusting from B visiting visa to green card through employment, through EB3 employment based green card. Okay, that is how it will happen. Now, after you go through adjustment of status, some of you forget, your lawyers forget. When they are doing the I-485, if I'm not wrong, adjustment of status, they have to combine that with the I-765, which is the EAD, work permit, because work permits can come. Mine came after three or four weeks. The green card came after one and a half years. Even some of you getting married, your spouse is only filing for one instead of filing for EAD too. And then you stay in the house for one year. This green card is taking too long. Why did you file for a work permit? So those two go in hand in hand. Once a work permit comes, who cares about the green card? Green card is for people who want to travel. As we are in America, we just need a work permit. A work permit will take you to motor vehicle, you get a license. It will take you to the social security to get what? A, a, a social security number. Then for you who is in America, the green card will show up at the door. They have immigration uh, doctors. They will send you there. They will send you fingerprints. Then your adjustment of status will be approved. Then the green card will arrive in your mail. Okay? That is how it happens in a nutshell. I know I spoke too much, but this is a very intense uh, video, and it has a lot of information. This is one of those videos you have to go back, okay, and then start writing notes. I have covered for everyone. Whether you are a nurse or you are not a nurse, this video was for you. You understand? You have to understand all the levels of nursing, starting from CNA all the way to PhD. You have to understand how nurses come from home internationally. And you have to understand the requirements, especially for accelerated nursing. I love you so much for coming. I'm so tired from work, you can tell. Okay? And I love you so much. Merci beaucoup. Asante ni sana. I love you. I'll come to the comment section. Okay? And um, you see... Thank you so much, okay? All of you, thank you, thank you, thank you for showing up. I will see you in the next video, all right? I love you. Thank you so much for coming. See you in the next video, guys. Share, 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 okay? If you need any information, of course, janetrangi67 at gmail.com. Whether you are looking for a community college, quick admission, we are here to help you. Any other needs, you have all questions. My videos cover everything. After I finish, most of you can do these things on your own. But by the time you look for me, now you can see. Okay, when you come looking for me, then that is something you have to give, give, give me time. Okay, you have to give me time on that one. I always say you can always use the video to help yourself. Okay, Asante Nisana, I love you so much. Go and do nursing. Okay, don't fear. All right, we are waiting for that diploma. I'll come for your graduation. Okay, we can't have people having good money and you, you are not driving good cars. Hey, God just helped me. Hey, God is good. God, God is good. It, God helped me so much. No, this is the process. The ball is in your court. Okay? Thank you so much. And I will see you in the, in the next video. JanetRangi.com. JanetRangi67 at gmail.com. Bye-bye, guys. Bye.